Hi, and welcome to my review of Disappearance Diary. When I picked up this manga, it was in a discount bin at my local manga store. The cover interested me because it was so simple and basic, but it had such a charm about it. I can't put my finger on why, but as I looked at it there, laying next to a pile of damaged old comics, something screamed in my head to pick it up, and I'm glad it did. I can't describe how ironic it is that a manga like this was found in a bargain bin considering what the book's actually about, but if I had to call it anything, I would call it an autobiography, with clear but interesting exaggerations and understatements in equal measure. I really hope you guys pick this one up. It's not very long, and it's only one volume, but the word I would use to encapsulate this story is real. It's painfully and absurdly real, and I relate to a lot of things that I read in this. I will be giving minor spoilers throughout the review, unlike my other recommended read videos. This is because the chronology of the manga is all over the place, and without notes to guide myself I feel I would struggle to properly discuss my feelings. But ultimately, I don't feel that this truly spoils any of the story. This was a genuine, one in a lifetime experience of a read. I could not recommend this more. You'll hear me say in this review that I relate to a lot of things that happen in this, and without reading it yourself I don't think you can truly understand the story, so I don't think the spoilers matter too much and they won't be super important. I won't get into specifics, I'm also just blank at title the parts of Hideo Azuma's life that are talked about in the book. Trust me, it won't ruin the read, or at least I really hope it won't. Which reminds me, a quick trigger warning for discussion of mental health, homelessness and alcohol abuse, just for anyone who that might apply to. But without further ado, let's jump into the review of Disappearance Diary. This manga is an autobiography about Hideo Azuma, a manga artist who made his debut in 1969 and had several mental breakdowns throughout his life. Though he wouldn't describe them in such a blunt way, the story revolves around these mental breakdowns and specifically focuses on three points in his life, of which two are him being homeless after running away. What's interesting is that even though the manga tackles some serious subjects and really heart-wrenching scenarios, it does so in a very comical and unserious way, which makes it so digestible yet somehow more relatable. For those who don't know, I personally ran away at one point in my life. I wasn't a teenager or anything, I was 21 and I had a really good job, but day after day of repeating the same things for work, being bossed around by people I didn't respect, and being forced to put away my own personal morals for the good of a company that I hated made me lose all vision of myself. It was like my life was grey, all the time. I started thinking that nothing was real and buildings didn't exist unless I looked at them. And then I met my boyfriend, and as we sat in the dark outdoors two weeks after meeting, he suggested we run away, and I had quite a bit of money saved up, so we did. <laughs> We ran away to Scotland, we stayed in terrible hotels and ate whatever was cheap, walking miles a day and drinking most nights, we smoked and laughed and fell in love, and then we both stopped drinking, and we haven't drunk in a couple years, and we're still in love. I don't mean to overshare, but I feel this unique outlook on running away made this manga mean potentially more to me than it will to others, because I first hand know what it's like to seemingly have your life together and then one day snap. Though I must say that Hideo Zuma's story may not be quite as romantic as mine. Let's talk about the art. It's a very simple and somewhat traditional style of manga. It reminds me a lot of manga that I've seen from the 1960s or 70s, which makes complete sense when you realise how old Hideo Zuma is and when he debuted. But I think the art makes the story so much more unique. The overly childish style brings so much light and laughter to a story that would otherwise be miserable and depressing. The first of the three periods of Hideo Zuma's story focuses on him running away from his job as a mangaka. It shows his thought process of him quitting his jobs and he almost falls into homelessness. He isn't suddenly homeless, but instead slowly ends up so. He seems to almost see the homelessness as more of a regular life. Hunting for food and finding cigarettes seems almost like a job to him, as he heads out the same time every day and comes home to a nice mouldy but warm bed. It's interesting because he doesn't really talk about missing the art aspect of his life. From what I've been able to research, the life of a mangaka is incredibly stressful and time consuming. You really need to be able to funnel all of yourself into that career, so it's understandable why it would cause someone to run away, but I'd feel you'd miss that sort of thing. There is a certain cluelessness to Hideo Azuma during this part of the story, 
as though he simply doesn't know what to do, and this is all he could manage. Oh, and he left a wife behind. It's funny because it's barely mentioned in this part of the story, maybe once or twice, but it's such a passing comment that it seems almost like it wasn't on Azuma's mind whilst he was running away at all. It also seems like it wasn't really on his mind while he was writing this story. It's sad, but it's just an interesting viewpoint from his mindset. He clearly didn't think much about his wife during this period of time. He is eventually arrested for an unknown reason, and taken back to his wife, who comes to pick him up, which is rather nice of her after being ditched out on. This brings us to the next part of the story. He runs away again. This time he states that something came out of his head and made him do it. This section of the book has us following Azuma and his continued adventures living in the rough. I kind of get this part as well. I still find myself in moments of my current life thinking that it would be easier if I just darted off somewhere. I don't do it, but I understand that mindset. Funnily enough, Azuma doesn't stay homeless for long this time, and even gets a job laying gas pipes. It's strange that he ran away from one responsibility, only to find himself in a far more physically tasking job. This goes to show that it's not just physical exhaustion that can affect someone. As someone who works sometimes 14 hours a day, and that's not to mention the work that I put into these videos, I understand the pain of mental exhaustion. There are a lot of days I have no energy whatsoever, but when there's work to be done, it feels like the only option is to run away, or just work through the pain. I think this manga translates Azuma's point of view so incredibly well here, working with people he doesn't like, but just getting on with it. Seemingly allowing himself to be taken advantage of by a loan shark and shady work fellows whilst drinking most nights really helps to show how exhausted Azuma really is with his life. Nothing seems to affect him. He's clearly intelligent, but seems to not care that any of this is happening. There are several points in the story where it seems that all he cares about is getting alcohol, but he does show passion for manga here and again in this second part of the story. Speaking of which, the next part of the story that follows on after the second homelessness is really cool. We find out about Azuma's history working in the manga industry before he ran away for the first time. It's a highly interesting read and it acts as a quick rundown of how chaotic and uncaring the manga industry really is. The way in which we move through the years of his life at such a fast pace acts as a great way of moving through the story quickly. But it's also a very artistic way of showing that time can get lost while you're working jobs you dislike. I'm not sure if this was his intention, but it's how I took it. I found myself wondering how it must have felt to be forced to draw things that you had no interest in, and to have your passion twisted into a forced factory for profit by others who care little for nothing about your art or happiness. But then, it's a feeling I know all too well. I worked in the music industry for a while, and I assume a lot of the creative types that are watching this video might also resonate with that same sort of feeling. The final and third part of this autobiography is titled Alcoholic Ward, so I assume you can guess what it's about. In this part, Azuma is working his way towards understanding his alcoholism. Honestly, this part of the manga tackles alcoholism head on. Azuma is very graphic in the way he talks about relying on alcohol, and the way that that reliance creeps in on you. But the perfect line art and cute comfortable style oddly makes it disconnected for the seriousness of the illness. This is definitely done on purpose, as in several interviews Azuma is found to be saying things along the lines of, no matter how bleak something is, there's always part of yourself that can find a way to laugh at it. Eventually, Azuma has to deal with his alcoholism though, and it's really interesting the way in which he goes about telling that part of the story. There are certain points where he's almost medical in his descriptions, showing that he clearly listened to what the doctors had to say. Yet there's still a heavy dose of comedy included in this part of the story. I don't find myself laughing hard at it, but I do find myself enjoying the experience overall. Admittedly, it is usually rather hard to make me laugh out loud, so I assume some other people might have an easier time with it. He repeated the phrase, how did I become an alcoholic, several times in this section. Almost in disbelief, he describes how it feels to be suddenly independent on such a substance, and the sort of side effects that come with alcoholism. I'm not sure about the accuracy of everything that he says, but I'm not here to dissect that. The point is, he clearly knew his illness. The ending is strange though, it's just very sudden, like a full stop out of nowhere. It's an oddly perfect fit for a manga that seems like it doesn't fit into any genre. It's such an outcast from other things that I've read. It's such a bizarre story that a true ending would feel almost out of place. It does seem that there was a sequel to this, but I can't find much about it online, other than it seems to have been published in 2013, I think? I really hope that I can find it someday and give it a read because this manga was amazing. 
There's also a fantastic interview in the front and back of the book, but I'll leave that for you guys to read. But his personality seems to fit his art and story very well in my opinion. Time for the conclusion. I think that Disappearance Diary is a perfect example of the inner working thoughts of Hideo Zuma and his unique but relatable outlook on the interesting and depressing moments of his life. It's amazing how much this comical and cute stylized manga can depict the dark moments of a single man's life. He admittedly thinks that the bad points need to be laughed at, and that's a motto that I've personally lived by for most of my life, so I understand it quite well. I have, however, never seen a piece of art perfectly encapsulate that very mindset so well. I related to this story very much, and I found myself wanting more, but being satisfied with what was up for offer. I would give Disappearance Diary by Hideo Zuma a 10 out of 10, and I would really recommend picking it up. Please give the story a chance. It might not seem like a grand masterpiece from looking at the front cover, but it definitely is. That is my review of Disappearance Diary a manga I picked up in a bargain bin for less than a fiver that was one of the most exceptionally unique stories I've ever read. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, or subscribe. I really appreciate it and it helps a lot. This is Measured Manga, signing off. You guys have a good one.